<laughs> that probably didn't sound that good. Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another reaction video. Today, we're going to be doing a horror animated reaction video. I saw Oompaville do this, and I thought I'd do it myself. Why not? The good thing about YouTube is that you can just rip other people's ideas off and just put a little tweak on them to make them your own. Nothing is original anymore. So yeah, I found... um this i found three that i'll probably do maybe more i'm not sure depends if it goes over 10 minutes you know what i mean <laughs> so the first one's gonna be scary field trip horror stories anime so i've never seen any of these really here we go so we're gonna hit play make sure that um everything's recording first make sure adam adam did you set this up i don't know who i'm talking to he's not even there right here we go then we're gonna press play hoo hoo Nothing spells scary horror than randomized colors with a weird font. Back in high school, I took a mysteries and mythology type class or something like that. I don't remember the name of the class. Well, uh, you should probably, if you can't remember the class you took, you probably wasn't that interested in it and you was probably doing it for extra credit or something like that. Basically just had to do with real life mysteries and creepy <laughs> sh I was into that kind of stuff. Oh. Sounds I like was a good taking class. a class with a good friend, who I'll call Ben for this story. Oh, Ben. My brother's The saying. teacher of the class took us on a field trip to a nearby abandoned village with an unknown past. What? The village what kind was of... built in the early 1900s, but seems as though it had been quickly abandoned shortly after it was built. Like Chernobyl. The bus ride there was about 20 minutes. All of us were glued to the bus windows as we pulled up some sketchy looking... <laughs> Look at that guy's face there. <laughs> I don't think he's alarmed. I think he's just pooed himself. Crepid road cutting through dense forest. The road eventually led to a clearing. We were there. Are you sure? That doesn't look like a clearing, does it? It looks like you just walked through trees. How did the bus get through these trees? Did you mow down these trees? We stepped out onto the road, which had grass growing through the cracks. The grass surrounding was almost knee high. It's a euphemism. Then there were the buildings. The tall, archaic brick buildings with a boarded. How is that supported? That surely cannot hold this. Oh. up windows all give off such chilling vibes. Wait, this looks like an Overwatch map. The teacher lined all twenty of us up. Counted the teacher. Sorry, guys, if I keep stopping, but the teacher looks like a Nazi. I'm not gonna lie. He looks like he sent them there to shoot them dead. Heads and then began leading the way. The point of this okay. little field trip was to use the so-called skills we learned in class to see if we could put That's anything together about clipboard. why the village may have been abandoned so long ago. Some of the buildings had holes in the walls to serve as entryways. There were even holes in the ground next to some of the buildings, oh boy. seemingly dug to get into the basements of some of the buildings, which seemed creepy. There was one building, though. It stood taller than any of the others. It just intrigued me the most. Do places like this exist? And is this Mr. N Who is this? Is this Mr. Oh, Lama Arts. Yeah, Mr. Nightmare. I thought it was Mr. While Nightmare. the teacher was leading he's the group a, he's a good towards the village guy. church, you check him out. Ben and I decided to sneak off on our own to look for anything interesting. They look like they're holding, can you know, those little um, flasks. They look like they're holding flasks, not clipboards. When we walked off in the direction of the tallest building, we saw a hole in the grounds. It was dug by the back door of the building, which had been sealed off. Oh boy. And in the hole there. was a ladder, which led down to the concrete floor below. We both looked at each other and knew we had to do it. Ben climbed down first, then me. Foist. Luckily, this was just around the time Apple started putting flashlights on their phones, so we had a source of light. It was creepy down there. There was nothing. There were a couple of beer bottles, one graffiti tag on the wall, and dusty wooden planks everywhere. Hmm, interesting. There was a wooden stairway which I led just up to go complete there. darkness, since all windows and doors had been sealed shut from above. We had already gone as far as to enter the building, so we figured we'd go up the stairs too. Okay. I went first, and with each step, the okay. creakiness of the hundred-year-old wood made me feel as if I was going to fall through each and every step. This reminds me of the Evil Dead somehow, I don't know why. The whole basement vibe is giving me uh, an Evil Dead vibe. Ben followed suit. This floor of the building was very tight. It seemed like there were many Ooh. openings going off into different, smaller rooms. It was so dark in there, you would never even guess it was daytime. Ben and I were honestly starting to get creeped out in there, and agreed to go back I, outside. Yeah, I'm not- I don't blame but you, just Jesus. just then, 
there was a noise in one of the tiny rooms, like a big rock hitting the concrete floor. Uh, a normal instinct would be to run, but Ben and I froze, locked eyes for a moment. Fly or fly. Then both tiptoed over to the opening of the room. It's going to be the lights into the room. A naked oily man. And ran. We ran Why? back down the stairs and then up the rusty ladder back outside. Whoa! We caught See up how we just got up that ladder? Breath. We didn't say anything, though, to avoid getting in trouble. One of our classmates asked us what was wrong. We told him we snuck into one of the buildings. And in one of the rooms, when we shined the light into it, it's a we saw three guys man. standing maybe ten feet away from the doorway. Oh, God. Facing Ben and I in a weird formation. As if they were waiting for us. Maybe they were just homeless guys, just looking to get some shelter. Oh, no, As we continued following the group, we paid extra attention to the tall building we entered from the distance. And before leaving, we saw a person's face at one of the higher level windows that had not been boarded up. We never told the teacher in fear of getting in trouble. We didn't know what to think. Were those just homeless people living in there? Were they yeah, gang members probably. in hiding? Gang members? Ben freaks me out with his theory. He says they were ghosts of the people who once lived in the town. Oh my god, yeah. Still, sure they were. the way the three guys were just hauntingly standing there, so calmly staring at us. The they wanted to sell you real estate, okay? That's what, that's what happened there. The moment we peeked our heads through that doorway, I still can't get that image out of my head. I may go back to that village one day. Just to prove Ben's idea wrong. This giving me um, it's giving me a vibe. Um, in the UK there was a show. I don't know if it's still on nowadays. Probably isn't. It's called Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids, and it was like little child horror stories, not like proper like brutal horror stories. But I, I don't. Me personally, it probably was just the homeless guys, and it's probably nothing to be afraid of. In honesty, but yeah, I I do understand where they're coming from. I I. I can imagine going into an abandoned house, not expecting to see anything, and then seeing people in there. That would proper scare the hell out of me, because it's just one of those things you wouldn't expect, really. Let's move on to the next video. This one's a hitchhiking horror story. It's from Mr. Nightmare again, so this should be fun. Three months after I turned 16 in 2005, I got my first car, a 99 Toyota Camry. On a warm Saturday night, when my friend Alex invited me over to one of his friend's big parties, I knew I wouldn't be in a condition to drive the Camry home afterward. So we carpooled with Alex's girlfriend, Brianna. We lived in the countryside of Virginia, meaning less big parties. Meaning when there was a big party, it was West a huge Virginia. deal and everyone would go. Take me home, country roads. We lived about five to ten minutes away from this kid's house. I knew where he lived as I was acquainted with him, but not exactly friends. The whole ride there, we took the same two-lane highway type road through the woods, and Damn. this kid's house was actually on this road further down. At certain points on this road, there were a few houses on either side, like the and shining. then it would just go back to being a long, empty highway again. The house was tiny, like a lot of houses around the area, but- This is the thing, I don't understand how people can live in areas like this where it's literally completely abandoned. I just think to myself, how long does it take for them to get shopping or groceries, whatever you want to call them? Where do they get their milk from? Say if they run out of sugar, do they have to then do a 10 mile trek just to get a bag of sugar? I don't understand how it works. Country roads, take me home to the place. West Virginia. Mount Mama. The party was held outside anyway, since his closest neighbors were relatively far away, and yep. noise wasn't an issue. Yeah, but that would that would be I'll weird. I'll skip most of the party up until the point that Brianna, who was supposed to be our designated driver, had to suddenly leave for a small family emergency. Uh oh. Alex so said it was fine and that we'd find a ride home. No. Well, fast forward another few hours and another few drinks, and I could barely even walk straight. The hell was that dude doing? I my watch. Being thrown through a table? What the hell is that all about? It looks like he's wrecking the place. Another few. Don't invite this dude to the party. He just seems to like breaking tables. Drinks, and I could barely even walk straight. I checked my watch, and it was like two in the morning. Oh no. I figured it was time to go. Yeah. I started looking for Alex, but I couldn't find him anywhere. In fact, it seemed like everybody I knew had already left. 
Uh -oh. I could barely even. So what were you doing, straight, idiot? But I was still furious at the fact that Alex could have actually left without me. I asked to use the party host's phone and dialed Alex's home number. After two tries, I gave up and then realized I shouldn't wake his family up. Just walk home, mate. It's all good. So, literally not knowing what else to do, oh my I God. busily stepped out onto the road and began walking back home. Country I knew Uber. this walk would take anywhere from half an hour to an hour in my condition. Maybe after 15 minutes of walking down the road, the slight shine of car headlights on the road was fading in from behind me. Jumping hmm. for joy inside, I lifted up my arm and stuck out my thumb. As the oh car God. Neared, I would never it slowed hitchhike. down and came to a stop right I would next never to me. hitchhike. That's just crazy. The man driving the 98 Ford Explorer rolled down the window <laughs> and asked where you headed. I told him my house was just down the road and beyond a right turn, probably slurring my words beyond comprehension. He chuckled and told me to hop in. I thanked him Get and in. joyously hopped into the truck. I was exhausted, and I remember completely disregarding things the guy was asking me because I was so close to just passing out. And that's what yes. happened. Oh no! The memories of being in that truck turned to a fog, as I'm sure I passed out. Oh no! Oh no, Mr. Frodo! That's just one... The next thing I remember, I woke up still in the moving truck. I woke up with a condom hanging out my butt. The guy looked at me and left, but didn't say anything. I looked around and realized the road we were on wasn't familiar. I nervously asked, uh, where are we going? He then said, so what were you doing out this late anyway? As the man answered my very straightforward question with another irrelevant question, the sobering reality of the situation hit me. Just took and roll, baby, uh, duck and roll. You can, you can let me out anywhere. And roll. I told the man. The man responded with a firm no. <laughs> nah, you're I felt right, like mate. throwing up as he said that. I'm gonna boom you. No, I, I really <laughs> actually felt like I was going to throw up. I started to gag as I felt more and more nauseous by the second. Throw up on him. The man took and his run. eyes off the road to look at me, and that's when I thought of the perfect distraction. I turned in his direction as I continued to gag, no way. and he started to kind of lean away and slow down the car. <laughs> Ew. Thankfully, I drank as much as I did because I finally threw up and made a point of doing it all over the man's lap. What are you doing, you son of a bitch? And stopped the car, and that's when I took it upon myself to run for my life into the woods and duck behind a few bushes. What? The man came following into the woods with a flashlight, and on two separate occasions, he shined the light straight over me without noticing. Eventually, I heard his footsteps walk even further into the woods past me. That was when I ran back to his truck, but unfortunately, he was smart enough to lock it. By Wait, he's gonna miracle, rob the truck and go? I saw a car approaching in the distance, oh. and I ran out into the middle of the street. Oh my god, so you haven't learned your lesson. This guy could be an even worse rapist pedophile or whatever. Waving my arms like a lunatic. The car tried to avoid me, but I wouldn't let it. They were forced to stop, and I yelled at them to help me before they came back. Once I told them that I was kidnapped by the man who was driving that Ford Explorer, the driver agreed to give me a lift. Not to the police station or anything, but to my house. I made it back safely where I couldn't thank the driver enough. I immediately woke up my parents and told them. My dad wanted to know if I got his tag number. And then I felt like punching myself in the face. I tag failed number? to get the simplest information from the guy that would have allowed me to actually properly report him. Yeah, but how do you know he was going to do anything bad? In your drunk mind, maybe he was just taking a detour. Maybe he wanted to fill up on gas and he's on his way back. How do you know he was going to do something weird? Number one, don't jump in a stranger's car. No matter how lost you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it. I would rather die, I think, than take a risk like that and being like sent off to freaking ISIS or whatever and being decapitated. Screw that. Is that he drove a faded blue 99 Ford Explorer. That's not faded blue, that's orange. I mean, Did the animator just go, ah, oh, shit? <laughs> oh, God, I wish I listened to the freaking story all the way through. The car's orange. I made sure to give Alex a piece of my mind, and part of me always held a grudge against him ever since just for abandoning me at a party without telling me. I haven't seen him in four years now, however, and this was actually the first time I even thought about this incident for almost a year now. As time goes on, even the worst of memories may start to fade. But after writing this to share with the internet, it's once again fresh in my mind. Oh, that's cool.
It's a good story. Although, like, just don't jump in a stranger's car, guys. I mean, if you always, always have a backup plan for yourself, just in case something goes wrong, have a backup. Why did this guy not have a phone? Disturbing true Snapchat stories animated. This should be interesting. This should be very, very this happened interesting. A week ago. Up until a few days ago, I went to a small local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. One day, I had the misfortune of running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy- Is that meant to be, um, hang on a sec, sorry guys. Is this meant to be, uh, what's his name? From Dodgeball. White Goodman! Into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy looking kid, probably 18 years old. He didn't look like he belonged in a gym at all. Hang on a second. Who looks like they belong in a gym then, dude? Stop judging people. Someone's, everyone's got to start somewhere, whether they're extremely skinny or extremely fat, okay? They're all trying to meet in the middle and be what you consider to be the perfect body, you judgmental son of a bitch. I had headphones in and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was muffled by the music. Uh, you want some heroin? Music. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten Great form, gym. dude. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. I took my time finishing my set and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I knew this kid was just trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. What's going on with this dude's train? Hang on, is he wearing sandals in a freaking gym? Are those meant to be socks? Oh my god, dude. Okay, sure. yeah, that, that's when you start judging. Who wears sandals to a gym? him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. I'll skip most of the conversation, but eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Instead of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. After I gave him my Snapchat and yeah, Instagram, why would you however, give it? I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Not wow. without saying bye like three times though. Wow. You must have been English. That night I got a oh. snap on my phone saying from Sean. I immediately sighed and said, oh no. Just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I opened the snap uh. and the kid was in a creepy weird pose, face way too close to the camera with his head resting in his hand and a half smile on his face. The text over the picture was hey. with two Y's. Two Y's, eh? Wants that D. You know what they say about the Y's and a hey. The more Y's you give someone, the more you want them. This guy was, he was, he was. No, let's not go there, Ryan. Okay, let's st stop. I muttered the words, what the f Hey, stop it. For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. My thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. Block him. I'm going to remove him and make it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. And so I did. I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. What, he didn't say anything though? You should have said something. I'm sure not even a minute later. Again, a message popped up on my phone saying Snapchat from Sean. I waited a few minutes before opening it. Okay. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed. No smile, more of a surprised, <laughs> angry expression. The text over the- Hang, did he add him in the first place? Why did he add him back? Why did he not just give- He gave him his snap, but that means he added him back. That's your first mistake, dude. You added this psychopath. Just let them add you, then you remove them. Then they don't know that you've removed them, do you? Because they, they've just- No. Or, there's a Snapchat setting that just says, Receive messages from friends. Just do that. Then you would have never seen him again. Honestly, guys. I swear to God. Unless you'd have came back to the gym and been all like, Hey man, I tried talking to you, but you're not responding. What's going on? I would have just smacked him in the face. Why did you remove me? Now I went as far as to block him. Meaning he couldn't snap Reply me. to him back saying, listen, dude, I don't want anything to do with you, okay? I was being nice at the gym, but this is really awkward for me. Can you please leave me alone? And if he still does it, just knock him out. Anymore. And that was or just that. call the police. Threw my phone on the desk and sighed out of relief. Half an hour later, my phone... <laughs> was he just waiting by the door, waiting for a message? Look how convenient that was. Look, it goes off immediately yeah. and he's just there. Half huh? an hour later, my phone goes off, saying Sean added you as a friend, oh my and then Snapchat from Sean. He actually made a new account. Oh my god, what a psycho, dude. I opened the snap and felt my heart drop. 
It was a picture of my front lawn. Nice. The text over it, answer me, bitch. What the hell's wrong with this guy? The first thing I could think of was- A gay- a gay psychopath. Is this what this is? He find my address. Then I realized, Snapchat made that new map feature that Oh lets my you god, you left your geolocator on. This dude is such a noob to Snapchat. You deserve everything you get right now, man. What the Things hell? Are. Somehow, I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window and the blinds and started considering calling 911. You should have, to be fair. Uh-oh. It was the sound of taps on the window. I took a deep breath, and with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the kid into my room by his neck. <laughs> I punched him in the face a few times before he was out cold. <laughs> wow, he actually now did it. I called 911. <laughs> he called 911, then he gets done for abusing someone. When they arrived, he was awake, cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well, because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. Only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account. But anytime somebody new adds me on the app, I'll never know if it's secretly that Sean kid again. Is he going to appear at the window? <laughs> oh, that would have been so funny if he just appeared at the window. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I think he did. Just there. Unless it's... I don't know what that is. He's just there clinging onto the window. Let me in! All right, guys. Wow. There we go. That was, um, I'm gonna leave it there, but if you guys want to see more, because that's loads more from this Llama Arts dude. There you go. Go subscribe to Llama Arts, uh, and also Mr. Nightmare, because this is where the stories are from. I should really subscribe, but I, I don't really listen to that many creepypastas nowadays. What's the point in subscribing to Mr. Nightmare if I've got the real thing here? That makes no sense what I just said. Go subscribe to both guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you want to see more, be sure to like, subscribe. Let's hit 500 likes, and then I'll release another version of this if you want, that is. Thank you for watching. See you later.